Tonight we meet the United States Ambassador to New Zealand. Hi everyone, welcome to the program. I'm Andrew Whiteside. This is Gay Talk Tonight. My guest is David Hebner. He's a gay man and the United States Ambassador to New Zealand. David Hebner had a distinguished career in law before being appointed ambassador to New Zealand by President Obama in 2009. Ambassador, lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining me. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Now, you've been in the role for about three years. How have you found it generally, being, being the ambassador and being ambassador to New Zealand? Oh, it's been a great experience. I've just passed my three and a half year anniversary, and every day has been a little bit different, and every day has been great. Now, obviously, you follow um, U.S. policy and the current government of the day policy, mm -hmm. but you also bring your own personality and your own strategies to these kinds of roles. So, so what is important to you in this role? Well, there are a few things. Uh, as the chief of mission running the embassy, I've got a large staff. We've got a healthy budget, although budgets are tight uh, in this particular era. Uh, and what's important to me is finding ways to make the embassy more inclusive in our programming and our activities, to broaden the audience, to broaden the number of people we engage with. Uh, so what we do um, since I've arrived is focus very heavily on youth and education, very heavily on communities that have not been engaged previously, previously by the American embassy or quite frankly by other embassies. So we're very focused, I'm very focused on youth and education, the LGBT community, the Pacifica community, Maori communities, uh, female entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, internet entrepreneurs, the kind of people who may not normally engage with diplomatic missions. Now you're a gay man and I'm interested to get your thoughts on what's been happening in America, particularly in the last couple of years around marriage equality. It's not a new debate, I mean I remember mm -hmm. doing a story on it over 10 years ago. So, but, but there has been a game changer with um, President Obama coming out in favour of it. What's your assessment of where that debate is now? Well there's certainly, it's certainly ongoing and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I think um, my view is best encapsulated by something former Secretary Clinton said a couple of times, which is gay rights are human rights and human rights are gay rights. Until we're all equal under the law, we're not equal under the law. There isn't a lot of gray space. You're either equal or you're not. Uh, and I think what's happening is partially a generational shift as as younger generations are becoming increasingly focused on the basic simple question equal or not fair or not all of the other secondary argument I think is receding in importance and there are a lot of different um, game changers along the way there's not simply one of them I also like to um, remind people of the the nature of the American system we are not a unified, tightly centralized country like, like New Zealand and, and certain others are. We are a federation of 50 semi-autonomous states. And at this moment in time, there are nine states and the District of Columbia who have created full marriage equality. And that represents more than 55 million American citizens living in jurisdictions with full marriage equality. We are likely to see in the next few months a couple of more of our jurisdictions join that group. And that will continue to move. Looking at a global situation, because in the West there, we've had this progression of, of um, rights for lesbian and gay people. Um, but it's not the same in, in Asia, in the Middle East, and particularly in Africa, e even in Russia. What is your sense of how um, perhaps America can help change that situation and how those situations are going to develop long term? Well, one of the things President Obama has done, and he, he did this a year and a half, two years ago, through a presidential directive, he identified gay rights and gay equality as one of our foreign policy priorities. And each of our foreign missions abroad has been tasked, as well as other agencies of the government who operate abroad, with or incorporating into their work support for LGBT fairness and equality. 
So I think in terms of our foreign policy, we're going to see increasing focus on it, particularly in places where there are still significant uh, physical challenges and attacks on gay people. I just wanted to segue into a little bit of your own um, personal life. And I, I'm, sure. just, I'm, just, um, I'm just curious, from your perspective, your coming out story, positive I have none. negative? <laughs> no, no, I'm actually a profound disappointment to the gay community on this because I didn't have a dramatic coming out. There was no parade or announcement. The, uh, no toaster on No, there was, you know, there was nothing. I, um, I clearly remember the day I woke up and realized uh, I liked men and at a relatively young age. And my first thought was, oh, hell, this is going to be inconvenient. So my grand self coming out was, this could be annoying. But my second thought was, you know, it is what it is. So I was actually a very pragmatic kid. And so I behaved in ways that prevented problems from occurring because I was smart enough to recognize, and most humans are, self-preservation is a natural instinct. So it was fine with me, no drama, no self-loathing. Uh, I was just careful in my environment because I grew up in a small town, relatively conservative. Um, you just, you've got to take care of yourself. My coming out over time uh, was a gradual process. It was never really a secret. I actually assumed everybody knew and they were just being polite. But through school, you gradually come out to different groups of people in a formal way. You start dating, you start being visible in certain places. And I think in many ways, that's what we're aspiring to, where there is no coming out. There's just being who you are and people notice and you go about your life and nothing is hidden. It's just natural. Now, I'm not saying my, my experience is the paradigm. I'm just saying because of the way I was oriented at the time, it was a very gradual process. Uh, there are still people who don't know, I'm sure, um, but <laughs> that's their own fault. That's not mine. <laughs> I, I've often wondered, particularly in my own, um, my own life mm -hmm. coming out. Did you have a parade? The other week you were there. I think. It, was, it, was, it was a little delayed. That's yeah. right. Um, if I've had an expectation that I expect to be treated equally, uh -huh. then that affects the reactions that people have around you. I think the coming out process is very important. And the sea change on marriage equality, I think, isn't necessarily one or another individual who did anything. It was the community leaders who were smart enough at the decades ago to articulate the importance of being visible. And being visible is very important because it makes us more than a theoretical construct. So coming out is very important. We are getting to the point, though, where it is becoming less important on a personal level, more important even more important on a public level with people of certain accomplishments in certain fields so that it's clear to everybody that there are LGBT people in all walks of life, succeeding, happy, well-adjusted, contributing to everybody around them. My final question, mm -hmm. and that is basically, what do you think it takes to have a happy, successful kind of life or fulfilled kind of life? <laughs> well, that's a very easy, direct question. Um, there are a couple of things, actually. I think the most important, and this is going to sound a little bit, um, a little bit light, but the key is being comfortable with who, who you are. Um, now, how do you become comfortable with who you are? That's the hard question. But I know all kinds of people in all different circumstances who are very, leading very happy lives, some with a lot of things, some with few things. What they all share is they have some understanding of who they are and they're fine with that. And that's the message of my own sort of coming out. It's, there was the realization I had not internalized other people's problems. I looked at myself with my own eyes and thought, if this is what it is, fine. I'm very happy with this, actually. This could be great, even though it could be annoying. But it is who I am. I could try to change that, but that's going to make me unhappy. 
and it's not going to be possible. So to me, that's the secret. Become comfortable with who you are and live your life. Don't try to lead somebody else's life. A lot of people are trying to live somebody else's life. The other piece of it is shake things up. Um, people who do many different things, often simultaneously, I find are the happiest. Life is too short to just do one thing. Do as many things as you can. It keeps you from getting bored. Ambassador David Hebner, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. That's Gay Talk tonight. Thank you for watching. I'll see you back real soon.